Hello, and welcome to a new video. I couldn't post anything for like 3 days because my internet went down, and that means that my life was on pause because in the 21st century, if you don't have any internet, you don't have any life. Uh, so I'm actually still pretty behind with the optimization that I was talking about in the last video. So I am going to talk about something slightly different today. I am going to tell you what the half edge data structure is. And to get you motivated, this is the kind of stuff that you can do with a half edge. So as you can see, I have turned the cube that I started with into this smooth uh, or smoother shape. Um, this is very similar to how Blender does uh, smoothing. It's called a subdivision algorithm and it's something that becomes much easier to implement with a half edge. So in order to understand why the half edge makes these kinds of operations simpler, um, I am going to start talking about the theory. So what is a half edge? Um, I am going to assume that you know what uh, a directed graph is. If you don't know, uh, I'm going to link the Wikipedia entry for directed graphs. It's not complicated, it's not super hard, it's like very straightforward. Um, and without further ado, so what a half edge is, is a directed graph representation of a mesh in which each edge has been, has been split into two elements, two directed um, edges, one that goes from point 1 to point 2, and another one that goes from point 2 to point 1. So, in addition to that, what you want to do is you want to grab every face in uh, your mesh, and you want to sort the um, uh, edges such that they're always pointing in a consistent orientation. So either every edge turns clockwise or every edge turns counterclockwise. So if you see in this diagram, for example, you can see that both triangles uh, are orient that all the edges in both triangles are oriented such that you get a clockwise um, rotation. Now. This imposes a specific restriction on your mesh, and that is that this only works for orientable meshes. Now, there are some non-orientable meshes out there. However, most meshes are either orientable or can be made orientable without much uh, deformation. So, it is fairly safe to assume that you're going to have an orientable mesh. Um, most things in nature end up being oriented. Now, once you've done this, once you've defined every face, you have this uh, consistent uh, winding order, and you split all of you all of your edges such that there's two of them. You are going to attach them such that, for example, in this case, this blue edge over here is now going to be pointing to this black edge over here and that black edge is going to be pointing to this edge and so on and so on and so on. So within, within a mesh not only are you going to order them such that their order is the winding order but you're also going to attach a pointer such that anyone in the sequence points to the one that goes after it and you're also going to do it the other way around where every half edge is going to be pointing to the one that goes before it and in addition to that every edge must also have a pointer to only the source vertex so for example in this case this blue edge is pointing towards the highlighted vertex and only to the highlighted vertex and the and this black one is pointing towards this highlighted vertex and once again only to the highlighted vertex and you do this for every half edge and finally every half edge must also point towards the face uh, that contains it so for example in here the blue edge is going to be pointing towards this face and this edge that i'm highlighting now is going to be pointing towards 
this phase, so on and so on and so on. And this creates a very neat um, graph representation of your mesh. Now, what does that give you? What, why is this uh, useful at all? Well, once you've initialized the half edge data structure, um, you are able to find the neighborhood of a vertex or an edge in constant time. So it becomes really efficient to do mesh manipulation. So for example, if I have a pointer towards this edge that I'm highlighting now, let's say that I want to know which faces uh, it, uh, it is tangential to. Well, I know that it has a pointer to uh, the face, so I can get that easy peasy. In addition to that, it is going to have a pointer to its pair. And so I can get that one. And when I get that one, that one is going to have a pointer to the face. And so I can also get that. And so in very few operations, I am going to get both faces at the same time. Now, let's say that instead of doing that, what I want to do is I want to get all the edges in a face. Well, I just grab the edge and then I grab the next one and then I grab the next one and then I keep doing that up and until I return to the very first one. And once I found the, um, sorry, I highlighted the, the vertex there. Once you go back to the original one, well, uh, at that point, what you can do is uh, just stop because you've gone through the entire cycle. And so you got all the edges uh, that were contained in the same phase. There's many other things like this that you can do. For example, you can find all of the vertices that are tangential to the same uh, vertex. Like, for example, if I wanted to find uh, all the edges that are connected to this one, then I can just um, iterate the following way. I grab the edge that is connected to this one, and then I grab the pair and then the next, which brings me here. And then I grab the pair and then the next, which brings me here. So on and so on and so on. Um, and as you can see, you can grab a lot of very useful information like, for example, let's say that we wanted to do extrusion along uh, the face. Like, essentially, we want to take this face and we want to move it in a direction. Like, some arbitrary... I drew that terribly. Let's say that we want to move it in some arbitrary direction. Well, to move this face in that arbitrary direction, all that we need to do is we iterate through all the edges in the face, we grab all the vertices, then we move all the vertices along the direction, and now our face has uh, has moved. If you had just uh, your regular triangle representation, uh, it becomes more difficult to find all the local neighborhoods in order to do stuff like that. Uh, one particular thing that is very hard to find if you just have a triangle list is okay i have this triangle are there any triangles that are connected to it does it share um an edge with something else well you're going to have to iterate through the entire list in order to find it and that is very computationally expensive so this is a very high level overview there's a lot uh, more theory i am going to link a um, course from one university in the US that I think has very good resources to go a little bit more in the theories so that it's not just, uh, you know, a blank video. Um, that will go more in depth about the theory. Hopefully you got an idea of what this looks like. I want to show you uh, something about the implementation because this was something that I struggled a lot when I first tried to implement it and it didn't click for me until I saw somebody doing it the way that I want to show you. And so one thing that I struggled a lot when I was trying to implement this is how to actually initialize it. Because once you have it initialized, a lot of the stuff is pretty trivial, but initializing it, it's, uh, it's pretty challenging. So this was the thing that made it click for me. 
This is a temporary map, and this is, uh, to me, the key to an easy initialization of the half edge data structure. What you're going to do is you're going to iterate over every face, and you're going to be initializing the edges. However, you want to keep track of which half edge you have seen. So, for example, if you encounter the half edge connecting vertices 2 and 3, you want to keep track of it. And that's what this uh, thing over here is doing. It's going to say, for example, in, in my example, okay, so we've seen 2 and 3, and the half edge x is going to be associated with 2 and 3. And why do you want to do that? Well, because eventually you are going to run into the half edge that connects 3 and 2, like the reverse, the flip. When you do that, you are going to want to attach the current half edge to its brother. You want to set the pointers such that each one knows who its pair is, so that you can do all of those constant time uh, accesses. Well, if you don't have this, it becomes really challenging to test uh, whether you've seen a given half edge before or not, because you're going to have to iterate through the entire list. But if you keep this map, then that problem goes away, because now you can test fairly simply, uh, either in logarithmic time or in uh, constant time, depending on the implementation of the map, um, whether you've seen a half edge before or not. If you haven't seen a half edge, then you just have to initialize it and that's it. If you have not seen a half edge before, then this allows you to set uh, sorry, if you have seen the sibling of the half edge, if you know that it's on the map, then you just go fetch it and set the pointers. It may sound a little bit silly, but just adding this one thing and doing the implementation uh, accordingly can save you a lot of headaches uh, while debugging. Now, I want to talk about one last thing that is specific to my uh, implementation. Uh, it is not like extremely novel, it's just another advice uh, with how to deal with this uh, that I think is uh, relatively neat. The final trick that I want to talk about is a way to store uh, your half edges in memory that is way more efficient than what you might do if you do it naively and it's also actually easier for a few operations. So let's say that we have the following connectivity information. We have six half edges, A, B, C, D, E, F, and let's say that we have A is paired with C, B is paired with F, E is paired with D. Now, um, if you allocate memory, if you store them in memory in the order that you find them, you might end up with something like this, because the order that you're going to find them is completely arbitrary and depends uh, on the data. So let's say that you saw A first, and then you saw D, and then you saw B, and then you saw E, and then F, and then C, and you ended up with this uh, order in the allocation. The problem with this is A is paired with C, but now A is really far away in memory from C. So now you're going to incur some performance loss because you're going to have cache misses while trying to access uh, pointers uh, that reference C if you're looking at A. Another problem that comes with it is, is let's say that you want to iterate through every edge, not every half edge, but every edge. Well, you're going to be uh, starting at A, and now you're going to have to go to C and somehow mark it so that you can ignore it when you find C, right? Because if you don't, you're going to go A, then D, B, E, F, and then you go to C, and you don't know whether you've seen C before, so you have to mark it. But now you need to store an additional Boolean just to be able to know whether you've seen C before, which is uh, a loss of memory. And you might say, well, one Boolean isn't that bad, but multiply that Boolean for every single half edge that you have uh, in your mesh. Like for really big meshes, you can uh, be wasting a lot of memory for no reason. Now, ideally, what you want is something like this, where 
A, which is paired with C, is right beside C, and D, which is paired with E, is right beside it, and B, which is paired with F, is right beside it. And when you iterate something like this, what you can do is just iterate over the even uh, indices, and that's how you would iterate through every edge. So for example, you see A, then you skip 2, you go to D, you skip 2, you go to F, and then you're done. And now you don't have to store that extra boolean because you know that if if everything is stored this way, where the pair of something is stored right beside it, well, you can just ignore half of the vertices, uh, sorry, half of the um, array locations, and that's going to give you the correct information. So, how do you do it like this? What you're going to do is you're going to encounter your half edges and you're going to ask whether you've seen something or not if you have seen something then it goes into the odd index of the prior one if you have not seen it then it goes on the even what does that mean practically so let's say that we start our iteration right so everything is clean there's nothing we're here the first thing that we find is a we have not seen anything before so A is completely new and pristine, so it has to go on even. So we just allocate. The next one that we find is D. Okay, well, have we seen D? No, we have not seen D before. Okay, so all that we have to do is allocate it on an even. So we're going to skip this one and we're going to go directly to the next one. And what that means is that we're going to put D over here. Next, we are going to find B, and we're going to ask, have we seen B before? And the answer is going to be no, we have not seen B. So once again, we skip, and we do this. Now, why are we skipping? It's because none of these have, have edges that we have seen before. Now we keep going. The next one that we're going to see is E. Well. Does E have a pair that we've seen before? Yes, it does. E is paired with D, and we have seen D before. So because we have seen D before, we have to allocate it on the index that goes right beside it. And the next one that we're going to find is F, and F is paired with B. And once again, we ask the question, have we seen B before? And the answer is yes, we have. So because we know that we've seen the pair, we have to allocate it right beside the pair and so we put it there and finally we do the same thing with C and so we end up with something like this which is the thing that we want um, take into account that we only need to store the information of whether we've seen something or not during initialization once it's initialized it's done and you can throw that memory away so Although it might sound like you're still incurring memory overhead by keeping track of which uh, half edge you've already seen and which ones you haven't, and in which index that one was stored, in reality, once you've uh, initialized everything, you end up using less memory. And now you have this nice um, organization for your half edges, which has much better cache uh, coherency, it's much easier to iterate over, and it has uh, the um, added benefit of being really organized. And it's not uh, that complicated to understand. So I hope that for those of you that are interested in computational geometry and that may want to do something like this, that this will help you out. And I'll see you next time.